Hello, welcome to another YouTube cast of the hobo and his girlfriend. My girlfriend's off. I think she has a wedding to go to. Got me out in Texas. Have fun, sweetie. Miss you, but I have to get back to work. Again, this is the Hobo and His Girlfriend podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. And I'd just like to spend just a quick moment in remembrance. Vader, also known as Big Van Vader, and more so as a human being, and probably a pretty decent human being, Leon White, unfortunately passed away at the age of 63. So just a quick moment of silence. And a little tribute. And to all those that have passed, again, very entertaining. I, I, I remember Vader fondly. He had the big mask with the steam coming out. It was kind of fun. Does does the Vader bomb, kind of traditional big big guy heel, kind of like the thing I styled my own wrestling after him going up to the second row for being a, a big guy. Again, our thoughts and prayers go to the White family. Wrestling won't be the same without you. But the show does go on. So it's time to talk a little bit about both Raw and SmackDown. And I've put, I've put up a lot of videos kind of the past couple days. And I'm doing work, so I'm going to be looking a little funny every so often. It looks like I'm reading stuff, which I am. Last couple of days at this job. But time to talk about Raw and SmackDown. Again, all, all the kind of formalities have gone through. Again, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. You leave a comment, generally you get something in return. I think I've had video tributes to people. Show them how I make macho or lucha nachos. Again, put up a lot of videos. Putting one up probably tomorrow. Because lucha underground, lucha, lucha, lucha. And that's coming up tomorrow. Again, it's one of the shows I, I prefer. It's also one of the TV stations I get. I'm just lazy. Well, let's talk about WWE Wrestling, specifically Raw. And for the most part, the first part is kind of a recap of what happened at Money in the Bank. Kurt kind of gloats a little bit how all the Raw wrestlers got or, or won the Money in the Bank. And of course, Alexa Bliss with her cash in. You can watch my pre, one of my previous videos where I do a review on the Money in the Bank. And it kind of sets up a rematch at Extreme Rules between Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. Uh, Ron Rousey comes out, just smashes up. Alexa Bliss, fist, just punches her, puts her through a table. Ron Rousey gets offended. There's probably something she has to do or contractually obligated to do for the next 30 days. Oh, well, hopefully distance makes the heart grow fonder. But let's get into the real thing. First match of the night, we have Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Champion. This is good. Um, again, Seth comes a great promo. And the and I, he's a fighting champ. He has the open challenge. Um, both Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. So hard for me not to say Drew Drew Galloway. I'm sorry if I screw that up. Again, they but they both come out. Seth looks kind of confused which one he's going to face. Dolph jumps on the ring, tries to finish the match early, and really fun though. Again, the, the two really work well together. There's some chemistry there. They they hit their moves. They know their spots. They hit all the beats they need to. I mean, the super kick party between the two. I mean, I can still remember when the super kick was a finisher. So that, that's something else. It, it kind of really went fit for tat. You can do this. I can do that too. Again, Seth. Lesson to be learned here, Seth. If you grab the tights, eventually someone's going to grab your tights. So again, it was roll up first. Seth tried to grab the tights. Ziggler re reversed it, grabbed his tights. One, two, three. New Intercontinental Champion, Dolph Ziggler! Sorry, I'm a little bit thirsty. World Cheapo Mountain Lightning Energy. Not bad. Kind of forgot to take that this morning. Again, that was a really good match. It was a surf and surf quality match. The next... <laughs> Bobby Roode versus Kurt Hawkins. And probably shouldn't do this, but I guess I'm in a good mood because of all the good quality. What the heck? 
This was a cheeseburger match. It was actually kind of fun. And the reason why it was fun, I mean, Kurt Hawkins trying to pull all, all the stunts to just try and get his first victory. I always said, eh, eh, not happening. Again, it was just fun. Actually, it was pretty good action. It, Kurt Hawkins really teased that this is going to be his first victory over Bobby Roode, which would have been amazing. I say he's going to wait to wrestle Baron Corbin and embarrass the comfortable. Uh, being too serious. And it was a cheeseburger match. It was fun. Then you had some more Money in the Bank kind of recaps. Braun, Braun Strowman comes out. That's how he, he's a monster in the bank. KO tries to butter up to him. You know, so many people are going to be after you. I'll be your protection. Uh -uh, Braun doesn't need any protection. And then you have Sasha and Bailey in the backstage. Oh, they hook you make up. We'll see where this goes. Then, you had another, then the next match, you had the Bleeder of Worlds, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. Those were fun. I mean, Bray looks like he's, he at least looks like he's having fun. Matt always met just having a ball versus Heath Slater and Rhino. And this was okay. I'm, I'm kind of getting over this match. If, if I have to see this match one more time, it's going to go down and right. But again, for something so with the hit, oh. A cheeseburger. Yeah, it's just really fun. I mean, Bray always gets a hot tag. Matt kind of gets beat up a little bit. Mainly by Rhino. Heath Slater's just there to get beat up a little bit. It was fun. Mm. The Wyatt's <laughs> probably the highlight of this really was the beginning where the beat of Curtis Axel and Wyatt, I want to say of um, Bo Dallas, his brother, kind of show up, do a little stage, do, do a little thing, and, and, and Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt look confused. Bo Dallas is his brother's brother, though. He doesn't need that beard. And you see the two of them kind of together. Again, after that, the sneak attack by Heath Slater. I know, which makes sense. Hey, they're the tag team champions. We can get an early advantage. Go for it. I'd like to wish a happy birthday. Some melancholy news. I want to have some happy news. Happy birthday. Woo! To whoever had the it's my birthday sign up there. I just like looking at the signs. Crowds are fun sometimes like that. And this was actually a fairly match-heavy draw, because, again, you have Jinder Mahal versus Gable for, like, the third time. But for some some the, is this grill day? Because for some reason, this is another cheeseburger quality match. I can't believe that. I must, I must have been extra happy last night for some reason. A lot of cheeseburgers going around. It is going to be the 4th of July soon. Maybe why. But again, this was fun, though. I mean, Gable's very technical, and then you have the strength and power of Jinder Mahal. It was fun enough. Again, if I have to see this again next week, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Oh, there she is. There we go. Yep, come up here. Even she says it was a cheeseburger match. What happens? What happens if they have the match again next week? Okay, there you go. Give her a little air time. Look, it's famous, and there's some money around here. If I earn more money than me, and it was it was fun. Was it gonna match again if I have to see it one more time? And not so much fun, but but for now it's it's, it's okay. And then. Again, another cheeseburger quality match. You had Sasha Banks and Bailey versus the Riot Squad. And this time it can. What the heck is this just staying here for? Just, just... Okay, you, you've been out too often to go away. But uh, again, this uh, with the Riot Squad, it had Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. Logan kind of jumped the ball and trying to get into the ring. She, she almost jumped in too quickly. So you either kind of fall, fall, they run to the ring, step back, and then they go in. Logan was a little excited and wanted to jump in the ring. Um, Liv Morgan's getting better. Again, Sarah Logan has the best headbutts in the business. She could be the equal to any Samoan. And you do not headbutt a Samoan. Again, watch wrestling. You will learn never headbutt a Samoan. 
never goes well. For I think with this, I even forget who won. I think the right squad won. Yeah, the right squad won. The problem is, no more friendship between Bailey and Sasha. Yep, so they start breaking up. I think the good news is that this is going to lead to a Bailey heel turn. At least that's something new. I'll, I'll give them credit when credit's due, and I'll poo poo them when they need to be poo pooed. But I mean, as long as it's something new and fresh, a Bailey heel, heel turn, if they do it right. No Sasha Banks, this is your life, though. Hope they learn their lesson. But if this is done right, the Bailey heel, heel turn could be really good. Then you have the next match of the Revival versus Lashley and Roman Reigns, and this was preceded. Roman still gets booed. Even Lash with Bobby Lashley and the Revival, he still gets booed. Then this led up to the tag team match, Revival versus Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns, and this is just thrown together. I think they're going to do a little feud between Bobby Lashley gets to beat up Brock Lesnar and then get cashed in on by Roman Reigns, by, um, not Roman Reigns, but, um, Braun Strowman. That's it. And this was a, this was a pretty fun match. I mean, what the, what the heck was, the heck did I eat? Yeah, I had too many cheeseburgers this weekend. At least I had too many turkey burgers. Yeah, this match was like, like, like turkey burger. Better than a ham sandwich. But, I mean, for the most part, it was fun and, and, it, and it did what it was supposed to do. And, and this thing has to get off the screen now. There we go. But, again, it did what it had to do. I mean, starts to push the Lash, the Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns aren't on the same page as far as the tag team. Revival are still a great tag team specialist. I mean, they, they know how to get in there. And they know how to do double team moves. They're crisp. Lashley just kind of overpowers everyone. Again, Roman Reigns just kind of overpowers them when they're not being tag teams. I mean, it's a blind tag. It's like one-upsmanship. They obviously aren't on the same page together. What are you doing there? But again, it was, a, it was fun, though. It was fun. It actually told the story of how Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns are trying to one-up each other. And, and it was good. You think of KO being the cowardly heel backstage event. I just, he's so good as that. Then you have probably the one only down match was No Way Jose versus Mojo Rally. I mean, I can see why they had this match because No Way Jose comes in, the crowd starts chanting, No Way Jose. No Way Jose. So I, I can see why they had this match. And Mojo Rally just kind of beats him up. Um, pins him. Didn't do much for me. I mean, this is a can of soup match. It's there. It's better than toast. It's nourishing. Good. That's about it. Then we had an Elias segment. One day we'll make it. Soup. And then we had an Elias segment. Again, just kind of runs down the crowd, runs down Brock, or he's going to take on how Brock's not there. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Then the main event, again, another good surf and surf match. I'll, I'll say this for Raw. They actually bookended it. They had surf and surf to begin with, surf and surf to end with it. Pretty good in the middle one. Yeah, a little thing in the middle. I could deal with it. It seemed to go a little bit quicker than it normally feels, especially for being a three-hour-long match or three-hour-long TV show. Sometimes that three hours drags on and makes it feel like five hours. But it, it, it seemed like a good two-hour show. Hey, it's, they're like that sometimes. Again, here, you have very classic matchups. You have the heels of Owens and Baron Corbin versus the, the, the faces of Finn Balor and Braun Strowman. And again, it just shows Corbin's, again, being more of the heel bruiser. Versus Finn's speed and his technical ability. Um, Braun gets get, get, gets in. <laughs> Corbin gets the stairs. Um, Braun just picks up Balor and throws him like a weapon. That's just funny. Braun needs like 
just like a, a flagpole or something, like telephone pole, just like carry around. And it was just fun. I mean, Braun has his spots where he chases people around, crashes through the timekeeper's area. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is still selling all his injuries. So even when he hits someone, he goes and all he's like, oh, rubs his elbow. Hits him again. Oh. Just don't nail him like that. Again, does the senton splash, gets up. Oh, my back. It was really good, though. I mean, it was really fun. And uh, Finn Blower lost after Braun was distracted by Owens. I, I think this is a point when Owens, or not distracted by, well, well, Braun put Owens through the timekeeper's area. They both kind of laid there for a little bit. But Braun was chasing Kevin around the ring. It was fun, though. I kind of knew Finn was going to eat the pen. But yeah, this was a good match. It was a surf and surf match. It, it was fun. Uh, so that's it for all. SmackDown is going to be next. But just one kind of news note. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, Big Cass was also let go by WWE. This his time with the company kind of ran its course. Um, he, he was an okay wrestler. He was better with Enzo as Enzo and Cass. Again, we wish, wish him luck. I think is a little sneak peek. Jack's Wacker's coming back. I think he's a loot underground. We'll see later tonight. Okay, now it's time to talk about SmackDown. Again, my name is Hobo Tom, and thank you very much for watching the Hobo and his girlfriend. I think my my girlfriend's back in her her part of Florida. And one of these days, we're gonna have we're gonna do a lot more. Continuity as far as doing podcasts together. Every so often when we can get together. Unfortunately, I'm working. She has her job as a probably world class photographer. I'm a hobo, so I have to, I'm kind of stuck here. She kind of travels a lot more than I do. See my cat in the background, maybe a little bit. Yeah, but welcome to the show. Just talked about Raw again. We had some we had some news items again. Quick moment of silence for for Mr. for Mr. Leon White. Thank you very much. Again, if you do not know, or are turning in midway in the podcast, um, Big Man Vader, Vader, uh, Leon White passed away today at age, I think, 62 or 63. I forget which one it was reported by the various news circuits. Again, do wish that I'd like to send my condolences to the whole White family. Again, he was a giant among men, and and he was entertaining. He was just fun to watch, and you always want to wish good, good. Which good for good people. Again, everyone does have, have their unfortunate appointed hour. And I'm sure he lived a fun, good filled good filled life. It's very rewarding. Again, my condolences go out to his family and loved ones. And then a little bit on a semi lighter note, I mean you never want to see anyone get fired or released. But ooh, Big Cass, Colin Colin Cassidy his real name was released by WWE. Hey, not, not much else for him to do, I guess. I mean, he, he's a good wrestler, personality, so-so. Kind of really made it better with Enzo and Cass. Enzo's, Enzo's nice way. I'm not even going I, I don't want to talk to my girlfriend watches this. I'm her parent. I don't want to talk about Enzo's current songs. It deals with Phoenix and something rhymes, something that rhymes with Phoenix, too. Again, just go to YouTube, look up Enzo Mori video. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's talk about SmackDown. Again, this was also a really fun show. Paige, again, kind of opened with the recap. And a little bit of an intro to what's going to happen in Extreme Rules. And there's going to be a gauntlet match to determine the next contender for the WWE Championship, still retained by AJ Styles. And again, if you don't know what happened during Money in the Bank, please watch a previous video. I have about my reviews on Money in the Bank. Talk about it there. Carmella comes out then, runs down the crowd, like she always does. And the funny, probably the more interesting thing I found, she's lasted longer than, than both her two wrestling mates, Big Cass and Enzo Amore. Who, would, who, who knew that? Uh, she's, she's, her wrestling's improved by leaps and bounds. So I can kind of see why. So with that again, of course she runs on the crowd, says how 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 she's the greatest, Mela is money. 
And of course, then cue Oscar music, and uh, uh, it's not Oscar. But James Ellsworth comes out again, all dressed up as Oscar. Probably has to shave his legs too for that. It's kind of funny. Again, no, he comes out. No one was ready for Ellsworth. I hope this leads to a match in extreme rules between Oscar and Ellsworth. Well, one time off match. Ellsworth did a match similar like this with Becky Lynch. He got, he got ooh, when, when he just shoved Becky Lynch. Not, nothing really horrific. I mean, it's, it's going to be in no way a match like Suzuki and a woman versus Asuka and some other guy. That, that, that was pretty nasty. It is what it was, and, and hey, Asuka probably said, bring it. Yeah, entertaining. For the most part, but after a while, you're like, ooh, okay. Suzuki's stiff, too. And not that stiff either. Sick people. Sick thoughts. Even just a smack in the face seems stiff. So Asa comes out, <laughs> shouts at Ellsworth in Japanese. I have no idea what she's saying. <laughs> and I've heard stories where when wrestlers do that, especially if it's in a foreign language, they'll just be like, you're talking like, Hey, how's your wife? I heard your kids have graduated from college. Good job. And if you're in the back, you have no idea what they're saying. They just look like they're yelling at each other, and they're, like, talking about their wives and kids. And, and Why are you going out for dinner tonight? And they're just eating mad. They're just making plans to go have a beer later. Again, this, this is funny what goes on in wrestling rooms between, between two professionals. Eventually, she just looks like she kicked them right in the stomach. He's, he... He ate a good Asuka kick. And Asuka eats a super kick from Carmella again after being distracted. It was fun. It is what it was. And again, hopefully this sets up something for Extreme Rules. Then, the uh, heck, I, I, I could have sworn I turned my grill off. This has been a cheeseburger day. Mmm, cheeseburgers. Again, we have Becky Lynch versus Billy Kay. Peyton Royce got a, got a new haircut. <laughs> Billy Kay's funny. Her character work has to be the best. I think sometime in the match, she does a jig in front of Becky Lynch. Yeah, she has new hair. I kind of do miss the green hair a little bit. I mean, if, if Peyton Royce walk, walks into a store and I was in front of her in line, I wouldn't know who she was. Again, you have to have like the. I think Billy Kay still has a little bit of the blue in her hair. Peyton Royce used to have green. Now it's just looks like a normal hair. But again, it was pretty good. Um, uh, Becky Lynch came out and has a little bit new attire. I'm not a fan of the one. I miss the old two piece better. Again, wearing fishnet stockings and wrestling ring doesn't work because they always got ripped somehow. The whole crowd starts chanting Becky, Becky, Becky. And she had her moment. Yeah, she has a little new color pattern. It's okay. Again, Billy Kay runs down the crown, run, runs down Lynch, tries to do a fake Irish accent, runs down Renee Young a little bit too. But it's just funny the way Billy Kay and Peyton Royce interact. But this is a brand new aggressive Becky Lynch, and unfortunately she lets some of that aggression get the better of her. Again, it was a cheeseburger quality match. It was good. It was fun. It was action filled. There was, it was good interactions between Becky, Billy Kay, and Peyton Royce. And at one point, Peyton Royce pushed Billy Kay out of the side and ate a splash from Becky Lynch. Um, Peyton did distract at one time Becky. Billy Kay got at least a near fall. And, and again, it was just fun. Again, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce have excellent heel work. <laughs> Corey Graves has to be the friend of every heel because even though they... Peyton Royce tried to interfere. He's like, oh, he, she didn't have to get splashed. But Corey Graves, we know what the deal is. Again, he is a heel enough. Um, again, so it was fun. Then you had uh, a little recap between Jeff Hardy and Nakamura for the U.S. title. Then you have Jeff Hardy comes out. I guess he's... I, I like the fact that he uses science terms. I mean, that, that kind of kicked me out. It's like my neurons are firing. I have, I have sensation in the cratinous size of my skin. My epidermis is, is beginning to stand up. I'm like, whoa, I know those science terms. I like that. I could put some people to sleep talking about science, but I'll save that. For 
another day. Again, he turns around. He looks like either Willow or Brother Nero. Again, that'll be that'll be good. Then you have a Daniel Bryan promo. Has a little fun with Renee Young again. It's like, what do you really hear? She's like, you're ready. No, what are you supposed to say about, about how I'm looking about how I'm looking forward to this this match and opportunity? She's like, you're prepared. But he's like, and then she's like, oh. Yes, 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 yes. Again, just kind of having fun. I think the the two of them, I think, get along pretty good on Total Divas. I think I don't know if they're on Total Bells. I only watch Total Bells when my girlfriend's here. She she enjoys that stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, see, now, now you know it's all fake. Choreographed. Or at least, I don't know, Total Bells and Total Divas does seem scripted. To some degree. Then you have a Sanity promo. And it was okay. Then you have the Usos versus Sanity as the next match. And I hate to say it, but at this point, I turned the grill off. So this gets only a ham sandwich. The only reason it's a ham sandwich. Or did I even give it a ham sandwich? No. I'll give it a ham sandwich. It is Sanity. One, they changed up Sanity's entrance. They still kept the Primus heavy bass music. They lost the strobe light, though. The strobe lights had a great effect. No strobe lights. Hello, Thomas. That's... No, so it wasn't that good. I don't even think it was much of a match. I don't even know why I gave it a ham sandwich. I think it was just Sanity. Nikki Cross. There, Nikki Cross was an integral part of Sanity because she would come out just kind of running around, just bounce off people, and people would be like, Ooh, who's this crazy person? I hope she comes up. And they forgot the strobe lights. Killian Dan hit the Vader bomb. I don't think that news came out yesterday. I might have. Again, Vader bomb again. Rest in peace to Leon White. And I mean, you and the Macho Man and the Ultimate Warrior have, have the ultimate matches up above. But again, the finish was was a second row back suplex combo neck breaker, and it was like, that's it? it? Wasn't even a match. Hopefully, again, this leads up to something in Extreme Rules. It'd be fun to see an Uso Penitentiary slash Sanity style match. Oh, that might. That might have some. Some backing to it, but we'll see. And WWE's about stuff like that. Then again, you have the Shinsuke Nakamura blames the ref for coming too fast. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Then you have the Club versus the Br Bludgeon Brothers, and really, this this is a ham sandwich match. Not a cheeseburger. I turned that girl off a while ago. The only reason it's a ham sandwich match is because we just had we just had this at Money in the Bank, and unless they were going to do another title change, they didn't think they were going to do. It's going to be the same match, same results, uh, unless it's because they think that the the home crowd didn't watch the pre-show. Figured, hey, this is what happened in the pre-show. Again, I hate giving it a ham sandwich, but that's. This, this will be a grilled ham Again, it's not quite that cheeseburger, not even a turkey burger, only because they already did this. And again, you have the two brawling styles. I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, Luke Gall is actually a pretty good beating. Anderson's there just get tossed around. The club did have some good comeback. But again... It was, it was so, 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 so. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think that we were going to change when I saw this. I'm like, are they going to switch the belt so soon? But no, I mean, it was the Bludgeon Brothers went over. And then this led to the gauntlet match. And Daniel Bryan interrupted. Do not do that. Again, Daniel Bryan, not good for you. He interrupted the Bludgeon Brothers leaving the ring. If I was Daniel Bryan, I'd be, I, I would just sit in Gorilla or I'd go hide somewhere on the side of the stage let the Bludgeon Brothers go through. And then come, yes, yes, yes. But instead, Daniel Bryan went right through 
the celebration doing the yes. That was a little stare down there, which we'll talk about shortly. Again, do not make monsters mad at you. Just tranquilo. Oh yeah, there was no Sinkara or Andrade Elmas, anything. But this gauntlet match was definitely a surf and turf quality event. It started off with Daniel Bryan versus Big E. I think they went at it 2013-14-ish, I think. Yeah, and this was a really good match. Again, you have the very technical wrestler in Daniel Bryan versus, versus the more power-related wrestler. And Big E, and again, Styles make fights. Again, very early, Big E tried to match Bryan Tentacle's ability. Once Big E finally figured out that wasn't working, he switched to kind of a power setup. And again, it was just a good good work by both wrestlers. I mean, Daniel Bryan still, still is a great technician, great, mass, great mat wrestler. But then Big E also showed that not only can he use the power moves, but he's also a good mat wrestler. And he does those submissions like the stretch muffler. Again, and, and this was good. Um, again, sometimes I worry about Daniel Bryan falling on his head a lot. And I, th I think there was the one chant. I forget where it came in, but this is awful. I don't think it was this was awesome. I think commentary kind of played up a little bit more. And I think that came in. Oh, for the next part. When then, of course, Daniel Bryan made Biggie tap out. That brings in Samo fresh Samoa Joe. Jeez, Samoa Joe almost dropped Daniel Bryan on his head. From like a very basic power slam, and you just see his head like hit. Ooh, not good. I, I hope he can pass those impact tests. Again, the crowd was kind of chanting at them, and, and I and I think after a while, because it was kind of a really wonky finish. I think the crowd chants said, "This is awful." But I know Joe eventually had Daniel Bryan on the outside in the coquina clutch. He kind of knew what he was going to do. He was going to win by countout over Daniel Bryan, trying to put him to sleep outside, sneak in the ring. Unfortunately, Daniel Bryan got out of the coquina clutch, got in the ring first at the count of nine. Samoa Joe was looking at days at ten. And Samoa Joe, after the ten count was counted out, he lost. And I think that's when the crowd chanted, this is awful. So you have a beat-up, exhausted Daniel Bryan. And then Harper and... Actually, I think now, Harper and Rowan came in and just beat up Daniel Bryan. They said, don't interrupt us. You try to take our thunder. Not going to happen, little man. We're no, we're no big cast. <laughs> Horrible. But then after they get beat up, the Miz, again, always the opportunist to kill, hits the skull-crushing finale on him, pins him one, two, three. And then it's the Miz versus Rusev. So again, you have the cowardly, dastardly, opportunist to kill. Versus the bruising heel in Rusev, and it was Rusev Day! Because then Rusev came out, Rusev put him in the accolade, made him tap out, and it was fun. I think I like to go back in this match and just say they're just classic moves. Um, the Miz hit it, the double axe handle from the top rope. I haven't seen that move in a while, an old school move. And this was kind of fun. A little shock and surprise that it was Rusev Day. And then Aiden English came out. They started to celebrate. AJ Styles came out. Kind of held, held the title up. Beat up Aiden English a little bit. And again, it was fun. So this is unexpected. And I like being surprised like that. I mean, this is what makes it worth wrestling because you say, oh, I know what's going to happen. This happened, this happened, this happened. Now it's time for this to happen. No, they no. The math was done well, incorrectly at least, or at least they actually pay attention to stuff and say, you know what, we better put Rusev in this match. And if it, even if it's just an extreme rules match, I'll, I'll be happy. And thank you very much for thank you for viewing. And my name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is out, so you're back there in the background hanging out. Cheese pup, cat, the hobo kitty. And again, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment. 
A um, couple other things, probably tomorrow or later tonight, I'll be posting my Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground is back on TV. I think we're going to see Return of Jack Swagger, I think, is, is scheduled soon. Um, also, when I do my Lucha Underground clip, there's a whole bunch of wrestling coming today to Daytona Beach. I know I think I'll be able to make it for the New Japan show next Friday. And I know I have to write the dates down because WWE is coming, I know, one Sunday, once in Tampa, once in Orlando, and NXT is coming to town too. So, five. And there's going to be some Southern Pro Lucha Libre coming to town in the middle of July. So July is going to be a pretty breezing rest. Wait, that's, that's six. Six wrestling events I hope to go to. That means six more action-packed videos for you, the YouTube audience. Again, thank you very much for watching the show. Again, stay tuned to see what content gets put up next. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm at eight subscribers right now. Once I get the perfect ten. Oh, I hate it when I deal with this. It's always weird. There we go. That's a, that's a little bit better, I guess. But again, once I get the perfect 10, or at least 10 subscribers, we're going to have a perfect 10 pizza party. What's wrong? Production. You can halfway in this thing. Wait, this way. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, the perfect 10 pizza party with wrestling. I might put on some WWE 2K17, I think, is a game I have. You'll see the six faces of Tom square off in a ladder match or a hobo death match. I have to figure that out. I have to make three more versions of me. I have a little pizza. Share that with you guys. Share some WWE 2K17.